Hey guys, it's T from Driftwood Gaming and I'm here with another RPG Maker MZ The Basics tutorial. This one is about how to add your own generator files. So you may be wondering, why do you have Steam open? Well, the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to get to your generator files because it's not quite the same as the other things we've gone over. Most of the files that we've looked at have been in your game folder, but your generator files are going to be in your engine folder. Let's see the easiest way to get there if you have the Steam version. First, you find RPG Maker MZ on your Steam library, right click, and go to Properties. Once you're in Properties, go to Local Files and select Browse Local Files. I already have the folder open, so I'm not going to do that right now. If you have the standalone version of MZ, go to your Program Files, find Katakawa. Inside, you should find RPG Maker MZ. Now, my installment was interesting, and I thought I should mention it. I actually have a Katakawa folder in each one of my program folders. So if you look in one and find MZ but not MV, look in the other one for MV and vice versa. Now that we've located our engine folder, inside the engine folder is the generator folder. So we're going to open that up. And you'll notice that we have five folders here and four PNGs. These folders are for the images that will show up on the generator. The first one is for the face sets. The second one is for the side view battlers. The third one is for the walking sprite. The fourth one is for the damage sprites. And then finally, the variation folder holds the icons that you'll see in the actual generator to select what image you want. And then these four gradients go with the different categories of things that you can recolor. You can recolor your character's skin, their hair, their eyes, and this one, I assume, goes with clothes. So let's take a look at one of these folders. When we go inside the folder, you'll see that it's broken up into three categories. And let's take a look at that on the generator. We have female, kid, and male. In the generator, you'll notice that we have three tabs here, female, kid, and male. And these correspond to the three files that are in our generator folder. Inside the female folder, there are a lot of files, and if you notice, they have a very interesting way that they're named. This file name is extremely specific, and if you don't do it correctly, it won't show up in your generator. So we're going to go over that now. The first section of the file name here, FG, just shows what category this image belongs in. So let's take a step back and see what that means. When we go back into the generator file, this face folder is a category. The SV folder is another one, and so on and so forth. Now, back to our image, you'll notice the second section says ACC capital A. And what this is, is the first accessory tab in your generator, which you can find right here. If this says ACCB, then this corresponds with accessory 2. The next section of the file name is this number here, P01. Now this P01 number can go from 0 to, I believe, as high as you want it. And back in MV days, toward the beginning, each one of these numbers had to be consecutive. So if you had a total number of files, say, up to P40, if you wanted to add another file, it absolutely had to be P41. But now you can just skip a big swath of numbers and if you're not sure where you left off or what number you have, you could just name it P299 and it'll work as long as it isn't already being used. This is called the variation number. After that we have what's called the mask number. This is for face sets and it specifies the layering order of the child layers because these images are just PNGs that are layered on top of each other to make the full image of the face set that you want to use in your game. Note that when you're making walking and damage character and SV sprites, you'll want to add C to the file name, just C. Let's take a look at what that looks like. We'll go into a walking sprite and you'll notice here it simply has C. We'll go back to the face sprite, and the face sprites have different layers. The C layers for the face sprites go from C1 to C6, depending on which section you're using them in. And when I say section, I mean like this accessory A section, which corresponds with a different section on the generator. Each one has their own number of layers that you can use. And finally, the last number is called the mask number. This should only be added to face sets. The mask value is used for color changing. If it's not added, the colors will not be changed for that image. Now, about color changing, we skimmed over these four PNGs down here, and this is exactly what you need in your files in order to color change. These will dictate what color the masks change to when you change your color here in the generator. 
as you can see, we have a selection of gradients here, and these are based on the PNG file you find here. They will change the corresponding area that the mask layer dictates for each section. Finally, you might ask, well, this is all fine and dandy, but how do I add my own images? So say you're on the forums and you're perusing through the free assets or you're on the Dejica shop and you're looking at a DLC to buy and you're interested in buying generator parts and thinking, wait, how do I add generator parts to my project? This is a good question because it can be kind of complicated at first, but once you learn how, it's super simple. I'll just lead you through it right now. Let's go ahead and change one of our existing graphics to seem like a whole new graphic so you can see how it works. But before we do anything with the generator folder, make a backup. So the first thing we'll do is copy this generator folder and we're going to paste it into the same folder. 4,243 items in this generator folder. That's a lot. Can you imagine making all of those? Okay, now that we have a backup folder of our generator, let's illustrate how to add our own custom pieces in. I'm not going to show how to actually draw or format the PNGs for our custom pieces, but say you're perusing the forums or you're looking at some DLC and you want to add generator parts to your folder, I'll help you to understand how the file names work so that you can do that. So in order to change one of our pieces in the generator, we have to change its instance in each one of these type folders, face, sv, tv, tvd, and variation. So let's go ahead and jump into face and pick a piece that we're going to change. Let's change this, fg rear hair one p115 underscore C1 M003. So in order to change this in the generator, we have to find each instance of this file in all the type folders and make sure they're the same number. Now, if you're adding assets to your generator, the key is that you don't overwrite this number. Right now, it's P15. So I'm gonna see how many rear hair parts we have and how high this number goes. If you'll see down here, it looks like we have 22 rear hair parts. So if you wanted to go sequentially in order, you could make a new piece 23. But because we're allowed a gap, we're going to go ahead and use an even higher number just to test it out. Let's make our new piece, which is just a copied piece of what we already have, into rear hair number 60. So we're going to transfer this piece to P60. We have to find each one in each type folder. P60. Okay, we're done with the face type. Let's move on. Now let's do the SV type. So we need to look for rear hair 15. If you'll notice in this folder we have two rear hair 15s. We have to change them both to 60. Okay, now that we're done with the SV type, let's move on to the TV type. Again, we're just changing this P number to 60 for each file in all the type folders. Another thing to note is that for some pieces, there's going to be a second variant. So for this one we had rear hair 1 p15 but we also see down here rear hair 2. So let's find rear hair 2 15 and we need to change that as well. Okay on to the next type. Just make sure that you have each one. On to the next type. 
Variation is extremely important because if you don't change your variation file, nothing will show up in the character generator for you to select. You'll notice that right now the position of the rear hair file is between these two hair types, but after we're done naming it, it'll change position. Okay, now that we're done naming each type, let's restart MZ and see the changes we made. Okay, this is where the rear hair used to be, rear hair 15, but now that we changed it to 60, it should be at the bottom of the list. And there it is. As you can see, it shows up in each one of the different types. So this is how you properly name a file that you would like to add to your generator. We just used an existing file, but the same goes for if you're adding an external file, as long as you make sure that it's numbered and formatted properly, it will show up in your generator and you'll be able to use it in your game. If after adding some custom assets to your generator, you notice that they're kind of aligned a little differently or a little wrong, which may be the case, it, it depends on how they're made, you can always use the offset to make them look the way you'd like them to look. What a great feature! You can also see your origin point, so if you decide that you don't like your changes, you can put them back. Okay, that's all. It's just a basic overview of how you can add generator files to your generator folder in your engine folder. It can seem a little complicated at first, but don't worry. Once you get a hang of the file names, it's really pretty simple. Don't hesitate to grab some of those awesome resources that content creators make in the community. And make sure to leave a compliment and a like on their posts. But anyways, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button and consider subscribing. Also, come join us on the Discord. We have a lot of fun there. Until next time, guys. Bye!